No one wants it in their backyard, but the controversial issue of just where to store nuclear waste is a step closer to being decided this morning. The federal government has released a short list of six sites being considered for housing low-level waste currently scored at, stored rather at Lucas Heights in Sydney and in many hospitals around the country. The nominated sites include three in South Australia's northeast and one each in the Northern Territory, Central Western New South Wales and South East Queensland. Now it's a very hot issue in South Australia in particular where a Royal Commission into Nuclear Power is currently in progress. The move also coincides with Finland's decision overnight to approve the world's first permanent nuclear waste dump deep underground. Earlier we spoke to a resident living near one of the six proposed nuclear waste sites. Ross Brown lives in Hill End, the nearest town to Sally's Flat in New South Wales, which is about 10 kilometres away from his home. Uh, I'm surprised that it was chosen as it's uh, sort of in a, a triangular area between three uh, populated cities, Lithgow, Bathurst and Mudgee. And it's also halfway between uh, the historic towns of Hill End and Safala. Um, so I, I realise, of course, that it's got to be somewhere and everyone wants the benefits of uh, uh, nuclear medicine, but the very word nuclear frightens everyone. No one wants it in their backyard, but uh, we all know it's going to be somewhere. What could the government do to try to ameliorate those local concerns? Um, very little, I would have thought. There was a campaign a few years ago called No Base where the army wanted to have some facilities in the area and the locals uh, objected to it strenuously. The government insists though that we're only talking about low to medium level waste, the type of uh, uh, material used in hospitals for, as you say, nuclear medicine. Uh, should that uh, uh, be less of a concern than anything more serious? Um, I don't think so. I think uh, uh, the low level uh, of the waste uh, has very little to do with it. It's just that it's nuclear waste, which is the frightening thing for most people. Local resident Ross Brown speaking earlier. Joining us now in the studio is the Energy and Resources Minister, Josh Frydenberg. Minister, good morning to you. Nice to be with you, Mark. What do you say to Ross's concerns about this proposed site in New South Wales, still fairly close to some well-populated areas? I'd say to Ross that when he drives to work or drives home, he might be driving past a hospital that actually stores today this low-level nuclear waste that we're talking about. Now, Australians are great beneficiaries of our nuclear industry. Uh, the ANSTO, the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation, distributes around 10,000 uh, doses of nuclear medicine every week around the country, dealing with people's cancers and tumours and arthritis and the like. Now, we have an international obligation, Michael, to actually store this waste here at home. Now, currently it's stored at around 100 different sites. It's much safer to store it at one uh, suitable uh, purpose-built site, and that's why we've had this process where we've invited landowners to put forward voluntarily uh, their, their names. There were 28 nominations. We've chosen six. Uh, it's been rigorously an analysed already by the department, uh, by an independent panel who established a set of criteria, including engineering, uh, geological, environmental and economic criteria. Now we've got those six. We'll engage in a 120-day consultation period. We'll narrow the list down and hopefully by the end of next year we'll nominate one suitable site. And is it all private land? There is concern expressed in the Northern Territory this morning about whether the proposed NT sites could be Crown land, Aboriginal land? No, this is all freehold land put forward by the landowners themselves. OK, how much waste are we actually talking about if we can sort of narrow it down to a certain size? We're talking about two Olympic-sized swimming pools of waste that's been built up over many years. When you're talking about low-level waste, you're talking about the goggles and the gloves and the plastic and the paper that comes into contact with nuclear medicine. That's the bulk of it. And when you're talking about intermediate waste, you're talking about the steel rods that may be in a reactor. Australia doesn't produce high-level waste. That is only related to uh, nuclear power plants that you see in countries across the world. Uh, so we're only talking here about low-level and intermediate waste. And Australia is following world's best practice because countries like Spain, the United Kingdom, South Africa, France, they all have similar um, waste depositories. You mentioned steel rods. How potentially radioactive are those rods? I mean, what do you mean they're, by intermediate? Well, they're intermediate because of the level of radioactivity. Oh. And so it's actually less than would otherwise be the case with the rods that are involved in nuclear power uh, creation. 
You might have seen the news overnight that Finland has approved a deep underground nuclear waste site for the, for the serious stuff as well. If mm. Australia was to ever move in that direction, is that an option you'd like to pursue? Well, I want to emphasise that this is very distinct from the debate that has been sparked by the Royal Commission in South Australia. That's looking at all aspects mm. of Australia's potential participation in the nuclear fuel cycle, and that was started by Jay Weatherall's Labor government. Now, we welcome that discussion, and it will report back in May, and then the government will report uh, will respond then. But this is actually very distinct from that. This is only about Australia's low-level and intermediate waste, not about taking other countries' waste and storing it here at home. Could you see that as a possible economic opportunity? for Australia down Look, the track. People have, including Bob Hawke, has been quite mm. outspoken about that. Uh, this is a debate uh, that has uh, that has continued and I suppose it's got greater currency over time. Uh, we'll await the Royal Commission's findings before we respond formally. Another story concerning Express this morning, including from Liberal Senator Bill Heffernan, about the links of the new Chinese operator of the Darwin port to the People's Liberation Army. Mm. How concerned should we be about that? Well, we can only be best advised by a defence force. And defence officials, senior defence officials, recently said at a Senate estimates hearing um, that this had been looked at appropriately and given the go-ahead. So that's the best advice we can take. Yeah, but uh, you, people read that. Should there be concerns about just who is going to run a very important port in Australia? Well, like I said, if the Defence Department ticked it off and it's gone through its other proper processes, there was a competitive tender process, uh, one company was successful, and uh, we can only go on the advice of our Defence uh, Forces. Are you concerned about the behaviour of Julie Bishop in the days leading up to the dumping of Tony Abbott? Look, that's really in the past um, in terms of you know, recent revelations. Uh, that but is it? Because, excuse me for interrupting, a lot of your colleagues, including Corey Bernardi, even Cabinet Minister Peter Dutton, say Julie Bishop really has some answers to give here. Look, I'd just say that's in the past. I'm worried about the future or focused on the future. I'm more than worried, I'm actually quite optimistic about the future. Um, and uh, Julie Bishop is a fantastic foreign minister, a deputy leader, and Malcolm Turnbull has started brilliantly as Prime Minister. Um, I'm very grateful uh, for the opportunity he's given me to serve as his first ever Minister for Northern Australia as well as the Minister for Resources and Energy. Made no secret of the fact I backed Tony Abbott in the leadership ballot. But that's in the past and we're now focused on the future, which is very optimistic. OK, Josh Frydenberg, I want to finish up with a story that is absolutely gripping the nation this morning. <laughs> that is the pat on the royal bum by <laughs> Janine Kirk, a very important charity uh, runner, uh, owner in Sydney. Uh, these are the front pages we're seeing this morning. Uh, does that breach royal p protocol as a Minister of the Crown? I I'm sure uh, Prince Charles wouldn't have taken any offence by it. Nor am I. Thanks very much, Josh Frydenberg, for your time this morning. Thank you very much. And uh, now here is Virginia with the rest of the day's